All right, so for our last, last session of the day, we're leaving the candle and we'll, we'll venture into build systems. So please, a round of applause for Tim and Ilyas. Thank you very much. All right, thanks a lot. So uh, we're going to be talking about what it really takes to maintain a community BSP layer, a pretty high quality one, and confidently updating through a lot of major changes. So I'm Tim Orling, I'm a principal software engineer at Consulco Group, and this is Elias uh, Chargui, Chargui, who uh, was supported by, Med, for Med, by Medtronic. Uh, I always like to put the abstract into all of my presentations so that you can go back, look at the slides later, and know exactly what I submitted. Okay? Um, so Consulco Group, we are a, a services company. We specialize in embedded Linux and open source software. We really do everything, literally everything, um, and nothing's too hard. I've done some very crazy things, including live OTA updates from Windows to Linux in the field. Um, we're based in San Jose, California, but we're actually a global team. I've got some of my uh, Bulgarian and Portuguese uh, friends here in the room. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Elias. I'm working with uh, Matronic as a principal software engineer. Uh, Matronic is known uh, in the healthcare uh, technology solutions. Um, we, we are based uh, like everywhere. Um, um, I'm attached to the robotic department. These robotic departments um, provide recently the Hugo robots. Uh, this robot is for the surgery uh, in, in the OR operating room. Um, these teams in uh, based in, in in the us uh, however myself is in in the uk uh, london and then my focus is in the real-time video processing as well as i'm i'm part of the o o oe4t open embedded for tigra and so this is a link to our github community so this is where all the layers and all of the open source stuff that we're talking about can be seen uh, we have absolutely no connection to NVIDIA at all, except that we are supporting their hardware. So they're not necessarily you know, paying for any of this in any way. Um, we do get some early information, but that's about it. Uh, there's been several previous presentations, including one by my uh, colleague, Leon Anavi. Uh, there's also one that's really good to look at from Matt Madison himself, which is a good idea of the overview of what Metategra is and how it was all put together. There's a lot more detail about secure boot and disk encryption and things like that that I gave in a talk in Dublin. So we're gonna go over that today, but please go back to look at this talk to get a lot more info. Also, there was a talk earlier this week about secure boot itself by um, Northern Tech. So please go watch that video to get a much better idea if you're new to secure boot. Uh, so we're going to talk just briefly about some Jetson hardware that's actually supported by Jetpack 5. There are definitely changes here. You need to be aware of what they are. The main purpose for this talk was talking about embracing change and how to move forward confidently. So we'll go over a few details about what has changed. Then we're gonna talk about the future just to give you an idea of what to expect that's coming because again, there are more changes coming. And then finally, we'll end up with an, a call to arms. Then uh, in Jetpack 5, we are supporting several hardware, mainly uh, Orin series and Xavier series. Uh, from the Orin side, we are supporting uh, AJX Orin. Uh, this AJX Orin is like considered as the uh, high, high end uh, ha hardware. Um, the Jetson Orin have a 16 uh, CPU core and uh, 2048 uh, core uh, GPU. Um, the median and uh, Jetson is Orin Enix. Uh, Orin Enix have um, eight uh, CPU core uh, and then 1024 core GPU. Um, Orin Nano is similar as uh, the, um, the Orin Enix in terms of uh, GPU, however, uh, less uh, CPU core, and it is considered as the low end uh, Jetson platform. And then the prior platform was the uh, Xavier series. So there's the AGX Xavier. This was the highest end at the time. This has eight uh, ARM cores and 512 uh, GPU cores. Uh, there's also the Jetson Xavier NX. Uh, this has six Carmel cores and um, or ARM cores and 384 GPU cores. So you can see quite a bit of a jump into the Orin series. 
So the, as we said, the major reason for this talk, really what we're trying to talk about is embracing change and feeling comfortable with that. So the first thing we want to talk about is Jetpack 5. And in Jetpack 5, as I mentioned previously, we are supporting the Ordin uh, series, Ordin family, as well as uh, the we are keeping supporting the Xavier series. However, we, we drop some other hardware like TX2 uh, series and Nano series. We moved from kernel Linux uh, 4.9 to uh, 5.10 uh, regarding Ubuntu uh, because Ubuntu is considered as like uh, the base reference file system uh, from the NVIDIA side. Then we moved from 1804 TS to 2004. Um, regarding the ARM trusted zone, we moved from Trusty to Opti. Um, the bootloader uh, was C boot, now it is UEFI um, bootloader, um, as well as uh, regarding CUDA uh, and an accelerator. Um, hardware we we we, we moved from 10.2 to 11.4 and then we have a working in progress uh, branch we want to bring as well 11.8 with uh, with uh, cuda 11.4 uh, so if you want to follow that progress the first qr code is to that link for the pr the second qr code is what we recommend you go look look at to get a better uh, deeper dive into the new jetpack 5 stuff so this was a presentation by NVIDIA. We actually use some of this content um, in, in this presentation. So uh, if you look right now at this QR code, you should see this page. This just gives you an idea of exactly what's in the current release that, that NVIDIA just put out, okay? So a lot of this stuff is, you know, some new, slightly new platforms came on board and those, you know, were introduced and things like that. The one thing that we're excited about is this is the first time that NVIDIA has presented to us their OTA mechanism. Okay, it's different than what we're going to talk about in a, in a little bit, but um, we need help getting this implementation for Jetpack 5 into Metategra. It's not there yet. Okay. Um, and again, this is, you know, that link at the bottom is, is where you can keep up with exactly what the latest Jetpack release is. One of the biggest changes that we had to embrace, and maybe a lot of you that are in the Octo world had to embrace, is when you're moving from Dunfell to Kirkston or any release before Honister to you know after Honister, the override syntax changed. There are other changes such as variable syntax and SPDX licensing and things like that. But the one that's probably gonna bite you or confuse you the most will absolutely be the override syntax. So in the old way, it was with underscore, now it's with a colon. So if you have a machine override like Tegra 194, that would go after the colon for an append or a prepend or a remove. Um, Tegra, Metategra, we use overrides a lot. If you don't know how overrides work and what they're good at and how powerful, powerful they can be, go look at what we're doing with it, okay? It's really an amazing tool but it's uh, a little confusing to switch to the new syntax. The other thing is that the mixed use of append plus equals was changed. So plus equals means append this thing with space after the, the variable I've already got, right? Having that happen at a different time than when append actually applies, it's, it's just really confusing to people and people were using it wrong, not getting the behavior they expected. So it now throws a warning, don't use this just use a pen, okay? It's just easier. There's two commits where all of this happened, so if you wanna see the majority of you know what happened and, and what kind of changes you might need to be looking for in your own layers, look at these two commits. Okay, um, as I, I was mentioning in, in Jetpack 5, we, we, we moved uh, like, we, 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 we go from like a different like uh, implementation and then here we, we will mention like uh, the bootloader from Cebu to UFI, UFI implementation. If, uh, if anyone interested, we have the, the link there. This implementation is based on Geno Core uh, EDK2. Why we moved uh, to, uh, to UFI, this because of like uh, trying to avoid any, any additional, any customization uh, required from the uh, operating system, as well as we will, we will, we want uh, like going to the standardized side of things uh, regarding secure boot, as well as um, update uh, firmware. 
Um, if uh, anyone needs uh, detail about this implementation as well, we have the uh, wiki page from uh, like NVIDIA have a specific implementation of the EDK2, then please go to, to that wiki page. As well as I, I, in previous uh, slides, we, I mentioned uh, the, um, the changes on the trusted OS, trusty to Opti, Opti Open uh, Portable Trusted Execution Environments. Uh, this project is open source and then based on the ARM trusted technology maintained by uh, Leonardo, um, Leonardo Group. Um, here we, we mentioned like explicitly, if you want to port any trusted application from uh, Trusty, uh, to Opti, you need to align with a global platform API. And then here as well, we mentioned another example regarding the Chesty uh, tier ap applications, uh, which uh, uses um, the IPC, IPC mechanism to handle a low level message communication between the trusted application and then client application. However, Opti use uh, RPC remote uh, procedure call. Oh, sorry. Okay. Regarding the um, secure boot implementation in the in the previous uh, like even like Jetpack we have a different version and then we have the GA and then out of the GA we have different uh, revision. The earlier revisions we are supporting only a signing mechanism. Um, signing mechanism mean only uh, one one per key per key is like the Picasso key public key cryptography. But in the um, the latest uh, Jetpack here, I'm, I'm mentioning explicitly the Linux Fortegra releases. We are we are supporting we are addition we are ad adding the uh, encryption uh, like functionality support. And then here we have two two kind of key one for signing, which is uh, per key uh, public key cryptography cryptography, sorry, and then a secure boot key. Regarding, uh, regarding enabling the secure boot, uh, you, you need to go in, in like a mode to program the device. Uh, this like programming more focus on the, uh, th the fuses burning. Uh, I really like um, the, the implementation, recent implementation. We are using like um, the, the fuses, um, like configuration file, XML file, which make the things like the burning process much easier. Here I'm, we are mentioning explicitly like the the difference between the two series Oren series and Xavier series. Oren support uh, PKC with the different kind of algorithm, RSA 3K, and then elliptic curve uh, digital signing algorithm P P256 and then 521. Um, uh, secure boot key uh, it is 32 bytes. However, the, the Xavier series is. Uh, supporting PKC with only RSA uh, algorithm, 2K and 3K, and then regarding SBK is 16 byte. If you need any, any detail about how you enable secure boot via the Tegra Meta layer, please go to uh, the link and then we are like defining really well, like uh, the, the detail, it's like super easy. One important thing here because uh, I experiment uh, these things with uh, with Jetpack 5. Please make sure that the boot security info is well defined. Like the the value here is like well defined because otherwise you will break your device. This value you can get like the definition from the um, uh, Tegra fuses specification. And one bit off, and your device is bricked. And we have all done this. All of us have done this. Regarding the UFI, um, uh, from the NVIDIA perspective, we have like secure boot, UFI secure boot. Uh, we make, we are trying to make the things uh, easier for or like if anyone wants to enable this from the uh, Tegra Meta layer with these two, uh, two variables, uh, like super easy key and certificate. But in the reality, we have three different uh, kind of uh, components like uh, platform key. This platform key signed the uh, key in exchange, uh, exchange key, and then this uh, key key changed the uh, the database. At runtime, when you run your device, you have secure boot. Everything okay in the UFI stage. Um, the images uh, kernel DTB in a tram uh, like goes to like a verification mode. If the the signature verified. Okay, then you have the green light and then your device boots. However, if the signing is like failed, then you are like you are stuck. So yeah. after this, you're you're into the kernel, right? So this is only a very, very early boot. That's all this is protecting. It does nothing about the rest of runtime at all. 
then here we, we, we are mentioning the disencryption. Disencryption is like more to get like an extended uh, chain of trust. Then I, I mentioned previously secure boot, UEFI secure boot, and then disk encryption like here to protect your like your root file system. Okay, and then previously in the previous uh, prior Jetpack we have like uh, the NVLUX application implementation from the Trusty, but we are moving to Opti. One more I important thing here in the like the the NVIDIA platform, we have an entity called EKB, e Encryption Key Blob. To generate this uh, blob, you need these four kind of inputs. Uh, OEM key two, this is for, uh, mainly for the uh, Orin series, uh, key e key, key encryption key uh, for the Xavier series, a fixed vector, and then sim key file for kernel encryption. The kernel encryption is not supported yet because the UFI doesn't have the encryption uh, mechanism to to do to, to perform this. Um, the SEM2 key file is more for uh, disk encryption. To perform this disk encryption, we need trusted application and then client application. Here we are mentioning the NVLUX uh, serve um, application, uh, mainly to get the passphrase or, or the, the password, and then you can perform like the disk encryption. Uh, this application use uh, the disk UID as a unique context because you are you are like giving to Opti a unique context, and then you get like this unique uh, passphrase, like. Uh, to perform the disk encryption as well, we are you, like you have to use, as everyone knows, uh, the uh, crypt setup application, um, and then crypt setup application use uh, the DM crypt um, like kernel module as as backend. Again, one more important thing here: please make sure that you are using the right uh, fixed vector for the EKB generation. Uh, this fixed vector need to match what Opti uh, OS uh, define. Otherwise, you have this like application. This is in top early like stages before uh, UFI, if the Jetson user key PTA failed, then the, the disk encryption failed. There is no disk encryption. You cannot do. You cannot and, perform this. And you won't even notice this if you're only doing secure boot and you haven't done disk encryption yet, because the default EKB only has zeros in it. So you will never come across the fact that it isn't working or that you need a new FV or a new build your own EKB until you get to the disk encryption stage. <coughs> So everybody's interested in OTA updates. So we mentioned that NVIDIA has their own implementation. That's not currently, you know, we're not using their implementation yet, but there's several uh, open source implementations that are out there. All of these also have commercial support available. One that's a little bit special to us is Mender because of the fact that we had a fully working Jetpack 4 uh, uh, example in the Tegra demo distro we could use some help updating that to Jetpack 5, right? So when you're talking about Mender, you've got the Meta Mender layer, which is where all their core stuff is at. And then there's the Meta Mender Tegra layer in the Mender, Meta Mender community layers, right? So by definition, it's community, it's community supported. Right now, that probably only has support for Jetpack 4 and the older devices, right? Uh, Rauk is a similar story. <clears throat> Uh, Rauk's got the Rauk community layer, where there's also Meta Rauk Tegra. Uh, one of my colleagues actually did some contributions in this space. And again, that was for the older platforms. You may also want to look into software update or OS tree. There's a, a lot of different mechanisms out there. Pick one of these. Any of these is a great choice. Uh, one of the things that was important about this whole thing, and one of the things that Meta Tegra is a great example of, is how to keep up with the Octo project, okay? You don't want to be using somebody's vendor SDK that was based on Zeus that's been end of life forever and still claiming that you're secure, yada, 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 right? You need to be moving forward always. So the non-LTS branches, they go end of life in seven months, right? That's not very long time. And after that, you're not gonna get any help from any of the community supporting you because we've already moved on. We've forgotten what was in that, right? So it's a constantly moving target, stay agile. The best way to do that is keep part of your team or part of your CI building on, and I literally mean this master development branch, okay? Things will break. Make sure that that particular pipeline and workflow 
doesn't stop everything else from occurring, right? But let it break, have somebody on your team go and look at the breakage, figure out what it is, have a branch somewhere where you're fixing those things. It's a great opportunity to, com to contribute to upstream because you're gonna catch something that matters to you that we haven't caught yet, all right? Uh, minor breakage bit by bit is a lot easier to deal with than major, major technical debt in two years or four years, okay? So I'm not gonna talk as much right now about the specific timeline. I'm gonna cover that in just a second, but please don't wait four years to switch to the next LTS release. Switch to the next one immediately as soon as it's, as it's available. Use the current LTS that you're on for that particular product line that might not be getting updates or some, you know, might not be getting changes, but please move forward. So how do you do that? The only way you do this is automation. And the only way you can do that is through continuous integration. So we, as a project, as a community, have the oe for t auto builder. So that first link will take you to the instance of that. It's based on buildbot. The word based there, that'll take you to the code for it. It's not the same as the Octo Project Auto Builder. It's a similar concept, but it's different. It builds these three layers, Metategra, Metategra Community, and Tegra Demo Distro, multiple combinations of things, but it only builds the current, uh, currently maintained branches. So right now, as of today, we've always got master or development branch. It's never gonna be stable, never based product on this, right? But this is where all the active work is going right now. That's uh, the, some details about what's supported there. The current stable release from Yocto Project is Mikkeldor. So that's also on the same Jetpack release. The current LTS is also on that. While we were working on all of this stuff, the prior LTS had a different Jetpack 4 version, right? So we have a named branch to let you know that we have the other version available. And we try to keep the prior LTS up to date, but you know, we can't do everything. So now it's time to talk about the future. Yeah, for the future, we are expecting like Jetpack 6 um, soon, hopefully. Um, in, as, you, as everyone see here, um, we have the GI version and then different uh, revision for uh, uh, Jetpack 5. Um, we are expecting, as I said, uh, Jetpack 6 in Q3. Uh, the changes here, maybe it's uh, like minimum. We are moving uh, from like kernel 5.10 to 5.15. And then uh, uh, as NVIDIA um, use o Ubuntu, we are moving from uh, 20.04 to 22.04. But we, keep, we will keep uh, Jetpack 5 uh, uh, up to date, like, but mainly on the security fixes. And we'll mainly do that on the Kirkston branch, right? As we're moving forward, master's only gonna be on Jetpack 6, right? The latest stable release is only gonna be on Jetpack 6. One more thing, uh, we will, in Jetpack 6, we will support only uh, Orin. Please make sure like you are like keeping forward with, with the hardware. Otherwise, uh, Xavier, for example, will be dropped. And that's NVIDIA's choice, not ours. Of course. So a little bit about what are the, what kind of terminology, what thought process do we have but behind the supported Yocto project releases? Okay, like every other open source project, we have a limited number of resources. There's only so much we can maintain. So we always have to have the development branch. This is the only way we're, we're gonna stay uh, agile, right? So that's always gonna have the latest Jetpack. It's only gonna have support for the latest platforms that that Jetpack supports. But whenever upstream changes the layer compatibility, we're gonna change that. So you can't count on this being static at all, right? It's just gonna be constantly moving. We also have the current stable branch. Um, so right now that's Mikkeldor. Uh, that's the current Jetpack as well, but it's, again, it's only the platforms that are supported for that. That will end support as soon as we have a new stable release. We also support the current LTS that should be on exactly the same Jetpack unless something broke so much that we can only do the new Jetpack on development branch, right? It does happen. Um, we will also try to keep up with prior Jetpack releases by just doing a named branch, such as we have for Kirkston right now. We will try best effort to keep new updates to the previous LTS branch, but that's, uh, you know, again, gonna be best effort basis. We just can't do it all. <clears throat> So more about the actual supported Yocto releases, you may or may not be aware of this. So uh, this comes straight from the Yocto Project Wiki uh, releases page. 
Um, so right now we're in uh, Mickledorf 4.2 is the stable release. It came out in April. You can count on this TikTok very, very closely to this. It's very rare we deviate from this very much. So the next release will be Nambield that comes out in uh, October. In April of 2024, we'll have the next LTS release come out. So if you want to get a jump on what the LTS is going to look like for your own projects and everything and be ready to pick that LTS up as soon as you can, please start with Nambield immediately, like as soon as you can, if you can't be on Mickledore yet, but spend some time between you know October and April. So at the end of the year, switch your team over to the new LTS release. Then we're going to have three stable TikTok releases in between. Each of those is seven months. And then we expect another four-year support starting in 2026 uh, in April. Okay, Please move to the next LTS release as soon as you can. There's a lot of factors, including other you know, SDKs and vendors and everything. We understand that. But please don't stay on an LTS release for four years because all you're doing is creating technical debt. Don't do it, okay? It's a really bad idea. So a little bit just to kind of give you an idea how to get started with us right now. Go and clone Tegra Demo Distro. Uh, check out the Kirkston branch. And we use Git submodules. It's one of the ways of maintaining layers. So that's what we use. Uh, you want to go ahead and set up the, for instance, the Jetson Xavier NX dev kit, and then build the demo image and you're off to the races, right? So this is really a pretty quick process to get going. Um, and that dev kit is not terribly expensive. Okay. Um, the last thing we want to talk about is as a community, we need help just like every other community does, right? So how do you get involved with us? This first link is to the wiki. This is kind of a, you know, getting started or welcome to us page. We're gonna do a little bit better of an actual getting started guide, but it's not ready yet. And then the other thing is we uh, communicate on Gitter. Uh, for uh, Gitter, if anyone wants to, to join, we have uh, as well some rules, uh, rooms, sorry, uh, specific rooms for updates as well as uh, security. So that we have we specialized rooms for special, you know, restricted conversations. It's also a good place to come ask questions and things like that. Uh, we really have to thank the people behind us. This is us standing on the shoulders of giants, right? So Matt Madison did the vast majority of all of this work. We couldn't have done any of this without him. Dan Waltz is one of the people keeping the community aware, moving forward, communicating, and so on. And Kurt Kiefer did a lot of uh, security work and secure boot and so on work that really helped us out. But it's really the entire community. It's an amazing community. Uh, Metategra is one of the best BSP layers out there to get an idea of what you can do with uh, what a vendor gives you. Uh, so uh, that's it. Questions? Thank you, everyone. <laughs> and please wait for the mic. Uh, anybody that's ever watched one of these virtual or after the fact, it's really annoying that you can't hear the question. Hey, I have a question about the um, CUDA 11.8 support. Yep. If Jetpack 6 drops before you integrate that, are you going to backport it or wait for the Jetpack 6? You mean Jetpack, Jetpack 6 um, support uh, CUDA 11.8, right? I, I just mean if you don't get it merged, in, if you don't get the 11.8 merged into your branch yep. and, then 11, and then Jetpack 6 drops, are you going to make sure it's, yeah. We, we will see. If Jetpack 6 bring CUDA a different version, we need to align. But uh, this uh, this is like super new, and then um, NVIDIA provide this uh, for Jetson specifically, because there is CUDA for the SBS uh, uh, kind of uh, architecture. Then, yeah, we will, we will see how we will manage it for Jetpack 6, for sure. Yeah, so as I said, this will take you to the PR, so it's actually in progress, but we're also here at the conference, so we're not doing as much... Uh, you know, work as we might be. We will try. We will try to get it like really soon. Magic. Yeah. So semi-related to that, we're working on a customer's product. We're currently stuck at Jetpack five one one. Okay. Okay. Where there's AB update issues, which Nvidia have acknowledged yes. on their forums. Are th 
is it a case of are they going to say, oh, we're not going to bother fixing that till we go to Jetpack 6? So it's... That was why the... And, five... that, introdu and that introduces a whole load of other bugs because they're bound to break other things when they go to 6. Um, I, I'll try to just be polite and not, <laughs> not comment on bugs. But yes, there have definitely been bugs and flaws and things like that ha that have occurred. Um, my other talk was not quite so nice, so go watch that one. Um, I mean, do you feel but they're, yeah, they're but, rushing but, forward? So in, in, in particular, we were very excited about moving to UEFI and so on because now we're moving towards modern, you know, what, what ARM uh, system ready and things like that is heading towards, right? However, the big disappointment was there was absolutely no sign of life of, you know, some of the secure boot support and OTA support and so on. So the very, very latest 531 uh, release is the one that had the OTA update mechanism from uh, NVIDIA themselves, which gives us, uh, I don't know, 5,000 lines of bash scripts that we can look at to see something that they have actually proven to themselves works. So in case any of our stuff had to change, we can, you know, we have something to look at, right? And something that we expect to have been supported. Um, I, I, you know, I won't, I'll be blunt, like it's been frustrating that that particular thing took a while and so did Secure Boot. Yeah. So I'm also a, a quite understanding about folks that are struggling with other releases that they're on. Um, I, all I can say is you really need to direct your uh, ire at, at NVIDIA, but we're, we're, trying, we're in the same boat. We're trying to help you all out with that. Uh, yes, um, I'm by myself a small maintainer of the BSP layer as well. I'm also facing always with the question how many of these non-BSP related tools should I add to my BSP layer or it's not better just for architectural purposes, for readability purposes, to make a new top layer for that stuff. So we really try to embrace, you know, the Octo Project approach, which is that, you know, a layer is trying to do one thing and do it well, hopefully, right? Um, and so we, we try to not add a whole lot of extraneous stuff. However, if five people want five different OTA implementations and all of them have work and are demonstrated and they have great documentation, there's no reason for us not to go ahead and include examples for all five, right? Now, if in the future, those people that were supporting that drop off the face of the planet and we have nobody else willing to continue to support that, then we're going to drop that feature. But um, I think there's a fair amount of tools that you would be surprised that we have and that we have actually created ourselves. Um, so it, it's, I would still say like, if, if you can find it elsewhere, if you can point to some other layer that's well-maintained or whatever that has that, that thing, then be modular and do it that way, unless you really, really have to have it um, in your own layer. Yeah. I want to add as well regarding the Metategra is more focused on the BSP, but we have Metategra community, which like we are like kind of try to get aligned with the with the forks. For example, we are we are like getting like the Triton server for inference. We have Deepstream there. We have VPI. We have the different things like this is super related to the platform, but we are trying to get like the best we can, but separate. Let's MetaTigra focus on the BSP, but we can bring other stuff in Meta update. We are doing uh, like our best to get the update working. And also, you know, a lot of NVIDIA's uh, additional um, enablement they're doing with containers these days. So that type of stuff is a good candidate to land first in community. And maybe if later it becomes so robust and trusted, then it moves into core. But you know, who knows? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. No worries. Thank you. We have to give Tomas his uh, exercise. Well, uh, first, a uh, big thank you for your work on Metategra. Uh, I wonder with the change from C boot to the UEFI bootloader if the flashing procedure also changed. Uh, I think it was done through a Tegra flash helper script. Uh, is it very different now? It is not different because we are we are like based on the XML file flash. Then the executor like doesn't change. Is that a matter of 
flash layout change, and then uh, you replace C boot with the UFI, and then the whole link like together. You st we still like support the different mechanism. You are booting the the like kernel in it, and then DTB from the boot partition, or the three of them lives in different comp like partitions. This one works fine for secure boot UFI secure boot. As I mentioned in the one of the slides, encryption is not like implemented yet, but we are supporting definitely the signing and then flashing mechanism doesn't change. Like it is not like big deal for you. And so like the Tegra flash script itself, like we we wrote that, right? But it's based on the thousands of lines of bash that NVIDIA wrote, right? But like we go we do go go and look at that to see if something did change. And, and things definitely have over the past. Um, unfortunately, I haven't actually worked very much on Jetpack 5, so I, I can't speak to it from my own experience. But uh, you should be able to count on those tools. We're trying to keep them the same experience as, po as much as possible, right? And then we will let you know what broke. And if it broke, it's almost always because something underneath us changed. And we have to just, we have, we have to support what works. Yeah, that that's the end of it, right? It has to work. So, hey, nice, nice talk. Uh, you say before you have a yeah, certificate. So you you create to the certificate, which provide for the the NDBA. Sorry. The to the certificate for to the encryption. You yes. create to the, the certificate, so I think so it's provide for to. No, the, no, everyone can can create his own like uh, certificate. This one is like for the you mean for the UFI signing, right? Yeah. The Pika and then uh, Kiiki -ki and then the the database, right? The, these guys, right? Yeah. You can generate them and then we have in the, I, I, I don't think so, we have it in the wiki, but we have some links to the NVIDIA uh, online documentation and then oh, we, yeah. we will show you how you, for now we are using OpenSSL, um, but in, in the future maybe if anyone like move to production mode and we will maybe provide um, something else to generate this, this, um, this certificate. So from a product standpoint, production standpoint, you should actually be using, you know, HSM or T TPM if you can, you should be using a, a PKI you know, server of some kind, or you know, HashiCorp Vault to be storing your secrets locally. And there's there's a whole lot of best practices that you should be doing. Yeah, All we can crazy. really tell to people that that is generic enough for everyone to be able to use it is kind of the developer workflow. Mm -hmm. uh, but you should absolutely be using your own keys, right? Like, don't use our demo keys. Don't use Nvidia's keys. Use your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't say matters possible. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Very Thank much. you. Thank you. No worries. Any question? No question? No more questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.